Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today I have Howard Berg with me. Howard is a best-selling author. He's been interviewed more than 2,000 times, and he holds Guinness World Records in speed reading. Howard Berg, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So, Howard, uh, let's just dive right in here. Question number one, why did you become a coach? Well, it wasn't my original intention. I was majoring in biology, and in my junior year of college, I decided also to major in psychology. So I had to do the whole four-year psych program in one year, and that meant taking 18 credits of science, and I had three jobs, and they said I wasn't smart enough, and I did it, and I got an 800 on the GRE in biology, and then I wondered if it was me or the system. There's a big difference between you're strange and you can do strange things and you could teach it. So after college, I taught for 10 years in New York and then I started my own school. We had kids that are 11 to 15. I taught them how to do it. They did a semester of sophomore college psych in a week, lifelong developmental psych, and 15 out of 18 passed the AP test. So it wasn't that I could do it, I could, I could teach it. And to me, that was more relevant. It's like, how many goldfish can you swallow? What's the difference? But mm -hmm. we live in a world where information is the basis of everything. And if you could help people learn twice as much in half the time and remember it, you can make a big difference. And they, that's really what motivated me. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And and by by not only can you do it, but you can also teach it. Of course, by it, you mean speed reading. And learning. Reading by itself isn't learning. If it was, sure. everyone would get an A. Um, you have to not just read it, but understand it. Yeah, that's a great it. distinction. And, we, and apply it and yeah. not freak out when you're taking a test and forget <laughs> everything. So there's EQ skills, there's study skills, there's memory skills, there's mm -hmm. uh, reading skills. And by making more of a Swiss Army knife, not just looking at a book and reading it real fast, it went from reading fast to learning faster, much more relevant. That's great. Yeah, that's a very important distinction. Moving on to question number two. Howard, what are you doing in your coaching business today that is unique? Well, my program's in 109 languages. I think that's unique. <laughs> I've, I've been able to work in a very wide range of ages. My youngest student was in third grade. My oldest was 92. Wow. I had an 84-year-old read three books in three hours the day after I taught her. But I've also taught the Special Forces at Fort Bragg, the, the Thai Army, Fortune 500 companies. I have kids at 11 going to college, getting A's in a week consistently. So there's a broad, it's not like it's one little group. The kids use it for school. Adults use it for business to stay on top of critical data to make better decisions and more money. And seniors use it to stay mentally fit. So it's really has three applications. They're completely different for the reason you're doing it, but it applies to all three applications. Nice, very nice. Question number three, where do you find your clients? A lot of them find me, because you have a road record, they like, who's the world's fastest? If you go to Alexa and say, who's the world's fastest reader, they'll say me. Uh -huh. so I showed that to my grandkids, they freaked out. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> who, whoa, whoa. I was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, they mentioned me on Brooklyn Nine-Nine on one of the shows. I use the internet a lot, SEO. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of JVs. Like people like you, I'll do podcasts yep. and um, I reach people's audiences. My goal is to help people make mm -hmm. a difference. So if people have a list and this is a list of people who want to get smarter and make more money and be more successful, I can help them. So I, I work with schools. And so a lot of it's online marketing. A lot of it's word of mouth. I do a lot of stage speaking so mm -hmm. I get customers from stage. I'm a president of a Rotary Club, so a lot of it comes from Rotary. Mm -hmm. But it's and, and then of course if you're on shows and you're getting interviewed, people kind of want to find out more. They go online, they find out more about you. So I'd say that would be it. I don't can I answer that one other way. Years ago I worked with Dan Kennedy, very smart man. Sure. And uh, and he had helped a chiropractor. The chiropractor was making a million dollars a year selling his business every year. Mm -hmm. So someone said, Well, what do you got to do? To, to sell your business every year. He says, you got to get, I think he said like 100 new clients every month for a year. So he said, well, what's one thing I can do to get 100 new clients every month? He said, I don't know. I don't know. 
If I know a hundred things you can do to get one new client every month, <laughs> I think that's how I do it. The same that's great. Thing. There is a one way. Yeah, that's that's good. I appreciate that. A lot of a lot of our guests on this show will answer with just the word referrals, and they just get all their clients through referrals, and that's it's a it's a dangerous way to go about your your business. I think good so. thing to get them. I mean, I welcome them, but it, yeah. you're right, it's not enough. You, yeah. you have to have your finger in a lot of pies, and I think one of the most important things is caring about people. If people mm -hmm. just want their money. They don't want you. If they see you actually give a damn and you actually want to help them mm -hmm. and, and give them what they paid for, mm -hmm. I, I I have a support team, but when they don't succeed, I do it myself. Yeah. One, on one to make sure they learn it. And yeah. if I don't succeed, I give them their money back. So there's not a lot of people doing that. And I think that makes for better referrals because people know he actually does what he said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Building relationships. Good stuff. Love it. I love it. Question number four, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? I think the biggest challenge in any business is marketing. Most, mm -hmm. one of the things Dan would say is whatever business you're in, you're in the marketing business. If you're a doctor, you need, you need patients. Mm -hmm. if you're an attorney, you, you need clients. Whatever it is you do, you need people. And mm -hmm. the challenge is always finding people who will benefit from your service who pay for it. I mean, that's, that's, that's the basis of business, but it's always the challenge. It, can you do it in a way where it costs less money to get the lead and convert yeah. it to a paying customer than you're collecting? If the yeah. answer is yes, you have a viable business. The answer is no, you won't be in business very long. So not, not a unique challenge, but a challenge nonetheless. Every business, can you think of even a not-for-profit? No, oh, sure. Cost. They have to raise money to, to buy the donuts. It's not free. Yeah, 100%. Good stuff. Question number five. If you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? Trying. Well, my personal life, I'd say my first marriage was a storybook marriage. Unfortunately, Stephen King wrote the book. But I, I have a great wife now. So I said that would be my biggest do over. I was too young and I and I rushed into marriage before I really knew who I was mm. and what I wanted. And they're not a bad person. It's just the wrong person for who I became and who they sure. became. In my coaching business, I think one thing I would do differently, I'd be more careful about who I partnered with. I okay. trusted a lot of people because I go in, I was a yogi when I was younger. So I was taught to like, you know, be compassionate and help people. Yeah. So I go into a, a deal thinking, how can I help? What can I do to make this work? And a lot of people are sharks and they're going in, how little can I give him and how much can I take? Well, if you're going in thinking, how much can I give? And then thinking, how little do I need to give him to do that? Yeah. You lose. So one of the things I've done is I surrounded myself with people who handle that for me. I like being compassionate. I like yeah. helping, but it makes you very bad in a negotiation because you're not thinking of what your needs are. You're thinking of the needs of the other person and they're thinking of themselves. So it's better to have some, I see what makes you good at one thing makes you bad at something else. So general Patton, great general, probably not the easiest dad. Yeah. Or, or husband, <laughs> but great general. So what makes you good in one aspect of business yeah. possibly be very detrimental in another and as much as compassion and caring is very very not very good for a client it's not good in negotiating mm -hmm. negotiator has to be all about business and that's not who i am yeah and i don't want to be that person so i delegate that to others who are better at that aspect than i am and that's yeah. the mistake i made i didn't do that early on and i paid a price because i gave away more than i should have and people took advantage. That's a great I answer. I, I love that you have the awareness of that and that you saw that and you chose to honor yourself by putting people around you, right? That can take care of that for you and you can continue to be you. That's, I, I love that. That's a great answer. Yeah, I, I like being who I am, but I could never have been successful at what I do professionally with the attitude I had. It was a good yeah. attitude for the client, bad for me. Yeah, I think uh, it was Oscar Wilde who said, "Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken." <laughs> Pretty great one. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Right, right on. Moving on to the bonus question, Howard, what is the one book that you would recommend all your clients read? Well, it depends on what they want to learn. You know, if you're a dentist, you want to build a dental dam, you probably aren't going to read the same book. But if you're, I'm assuming our audience is primarily entrepreneurial and business mm -hmm. oriented. Is that, would that be a fair assumption? Yep. Then I would recommend Donald Moyne, Unlimited Selling Power. Donald okay. Moyne was a professor specialized in neurolinguistics, and he shows you how to use NLP in marketing which is what the superstar marketers all use. When you ever watch a commercial and you don't know why you're picking the phone up to buy something for no apparent reason, but you have to have it right now, you just watch someone pull NLP on you in a commercial. And he explains step-by-step step how that's done. And in any successful business, those skills can be very, very important. And yeah. I would it's called Donald Moyne, M-O-I-N-E-S, Unlimited Selling Power. And I've read it many times. I don't really read books more than once. Yeah. I read that one about eight times, and I'll probably read it more. It, it's, it's, it's going to change the way you do business dramatically and for the better. And is that, are those tactics from that book ones that you're able to put to use for yourself while remaining compassionate? When I did my commercial for my program in the early 90s, we sold $65 million. I'm going to say it worked. <laughs> All right. Not too bad. <laughs> if, you base, if you base success on outcome, you know, <laughs> say it makes $65 million selling something. And there was no back end. There was no upsells. There was no cross up. But of course, today, no one would just do a straight sale. They were sure. list building and a whole lot of other things. But it was a different time. Yeah. Does it tell you? I'm going to say it works. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it. <laughs> All right, Howard, is there anything else that we haven't touched upon that you would like anything that anything that you would like to add or pitch or promote before we wrap up? And also, if you would please let us know where our listeners can connect with you online. Yes. If they use the link below the podcast to berglearning.com, we have programs that will double the rate at which they learn and use information. Everything you do is based on what you know. If you know more, you understand better, you'll make fewer mistakes, you have more options, you mm -hmm. can change things you're doing in a inst you'll be more productive, you'll get more accomplished, you'll be ahead of your competition. Elon Musk reads two books a day. Mm -hmm. Jack Ma, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Oprah read a book a day. Look at their bank accounts. What does mm -hmm. it tell you? I'll help you to learn at least a hundred percent faster. If not, I rather understated than overstated, probably go faster, but a hundred percent faster or better. Uh, I could show you how to eliminate writer's block to get your copy written. Maybe I wrote my last book in five hours and uh, went number one on Amazon the next day. These are not things most people do, but I can teach it. And I think anyone in business knows that the single most important thing they have is between your ears. Hmm. That's where your business success comes from and the people you surround yourself with. So if you use the link, I can promise you, we'll do everything we can to make sure that you can improve what's between your ears. So you're able to make more money and have more success and help more people at the same time. Fantastic, Howard. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for joining us on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. Thank you for having me. Cheers.